Welcome back to Retail Therapy. My name's Will DeFreeze. Barrett Dudley, how are we doing today? We're doing all right, and hopefully we look even better because uh, Laura was watching our last episode or, or saw a clip on, on Instagram or something, and she, she not so casually said uh, to me, you should really think about um, maybe doing something for your under eyes uh, before the wedding because I'm not sure you're gonna like the way you look in photos. So I knew I was gonna be back on back on cam today. So this morning I got up a little extra early. I did I did a little I did the eye mask things. You know that you see them on you see them on the social. You, mm -hmm. they, they they stick under your eyes for like 10 12 minutes. I made sure to put on my little eye cream. You know my 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 little my little brightener. So, uh, you know, it's it, it it's somewhat hereditary and, and genetic, I, I think, that I just I just have under eye stuff. Me too. And maybe it's Randy's shitty lighting also. I, yeah, it could I, be. I, I um, will put a little, <laughs> maybe a little bit there, that the way the lights are set up, it does not do any favors. Like, if you wear a hat, uh -huh. the bill, like, puts a big shadow on your face. So I'm sure yeah, that the right. angle of the lighting is Yeah, great. so so also maybe it's just the studio and, and, and I'll be fine. But I definitely was was conscious about that today. It's and so It's my number one insecurity right now. Hopefully the eyes are just absolutely busting today. It's my number one insecurity. Um it's something I don't do enough to remedy. Yeah. I have legitimately considered before retail therapy episodes <laughs> like going into the office that day with like under eye things on just cuz yeah, like right, right. sometimes it just, it just is so evident on I me. I mean, we we got to be getting close to like the size of a podcast to where we've got just like a makeup artist on, you know, on deck for yeah. for, for for these recordings. Just we need a stylist. A little, just give us a little bit of a glam up before before we should before we get we... green room for before we record uh, yeah. retail therapy. <laughs> I mean, it would be very on brand, I think. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. No, I, I I am old enough at this point that I have been caught doing this before going out for a group dinner. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not something I keep in stock in our refrigerator. Do you keep them in your fridge? Sally always keeps those. Yeah. And yep, so yep, they're in the fridge. Sometimes I'll dip in and do it, but it's like, it's just not in my rotation. I I, I mean it's like. I think I think I think for as guys where we're not like conditioned from an early age to 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 get used to this stuff, it's like it feels like an inconvenience for us, right? It's yeah. like an extra ten minutes. It's an extra this. It's an extra that. You gotta, you know. It's like we're lazy about it, basically. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm like one of the laziest people I know, and that's why so, I don't do any of that. Yeah. But I mean, we we don't have the looks maxing ingrained in us at this that's point. That's right. Like that's we didn't right. grow yeah. up with the strong presence in our life teaching us how to break our cheekbones. Yeah. Right. Certain... I mean, maybe if there had been more baby girls when we were growing up, right? That's the thing. Like, I always said, yeah. like, I loved my childhood, but if there was one thing I could have, like, really done mm -hmm. with more was just having that example of just classic Hollywood baby girls yeah. rolling around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. More on that in a bit. What's so funny, I mean, Randy? Forgive me if it's on the rundown, <laughs> but are you guys going to talk about mewing today? I'm getting served so many mewing videos. Oh, I mean, we've talked about mewing before. Yeah, it's a, yeah, big, it's a yeah. big part of. Uh, I'd say it's one of the core tenants. You know, a pillar you could say of looks maxing. It's I've a, been, I've been, I was taught this when I was 19 years old, because <laughs> uh, I had a friend, and we, and she and I would always joke like, "Oh my god, like our chins are just sticking out in these photos." And so she and I discovered this trick, and we were like, "All right, we're gonna try this." And so we have all these photos of us just looking a little ridiculous, just mewing our our chins off. Yeah, but there's a new trend now that. That like guys or girls like won't talk to people because they'll just go <laughs> like if you're watching at home they like they put like a finger saying like be quiet i'm in the middle of mewing right now okay I can't talk wow because you. you gotta you gotta hold the mew for a certain amount <laughs> yeah. of time i guess if you look yeah. it up it's, it's a big thing now okay. I, I read something about like the proper way to trim your beard and how you need to have two fingers above your adam's apple is where you're supposed to do it from and I do think that's a very accurate thing from what I've seen. Mm -hmm, but any time mm -hmm. that I get a little lazy about it, I can always see in a photo like, oh, I need to uh, take that up above the Adam's apple a little bit because it just accentuates my uh, lack of jawline. Yeah, but be but be careful because one of my one of my icks for uh, for dudes out there is when they go way when they go way too far. It's baseball closers, right? Yeah, like you, you want it to be. It's also like you 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 want to trim it like basically at that crease at that uh, crease line. Yeah. And that, and but dudes tend to go like much further up when they go when you go straight to the chin, it it undoes the the the, the effect cover. Of, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. right. Like yeah, it almost yeah. has to be a strap that goes directly under, under you and yeah, lays yeah, under, yes. and it has to be that way. Exactly Otherwise, right. if it yeah. goes too far down the neck, you start looking like. And if you, I'd I'd rather I'd say go too far and let it grow uh, out everywhere, so it looks more like lazy and whatever. Totally, totally. Then over manicuring it just really takes you to a level of like. 
It just it just doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. It looks chin strappy. It's uh yeah, it's I, I, I yeah, if I'm choosing between that or like the Andrew Andrew Luck neck beard, like I'm I'm going neck beard, honestly. One of the best things I ever did for getting my beard trimmed up was um I, I got a couple done professionally, like just just classic beard trims at the uh, hair place. And it truly taught me like, oh, okay, this is how I should do it. Just watching her do it a few times. And now I can just do it all on my own. And I feel like pretty confident with it. But I feel like a lot of guys just need to go in and be like, all right, like make me look like I have a good solid beard right, right. and not trying to over manicure. Yep. Yeah. I got to figure out what to do with my, with, for, for wedding facial hair because everybody knows this about me, but I think, I, I, I think I like, like I look best with like, like maybe like a two day scruff. So do I just do I shave two days before the wedding? Yeah, and then just let it, you know, or am I or am I trimming down day of? You know is, what yeah, I mean? is there is there is is clean shaving even in the? Do you clean shave or do you just buzz it? I clean shave probably once a month. Okay, yeah, okay. And other than that, it's just like it's just trimming. It's just using a beard trimmer to 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 keep the uh, that that little you know it's a little it's 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 more than than minimal right now, but. Um, but yeah, I don't think I want to be fully clean shaven. I don't. It's not my best look. I don't think. Yeah, I'm, God love her. My mother in law was like, she, before our wedding, she asked if I was going to shave my beard, and I was like, I've had this for a very long time, and I understand the question, but like, I also do, I think it'd be very weird if like I existed in this world with this beard for years on end, and then just randomly had nothing for my wedding photos. Yeah, that, yeah there yeah. might be a time when it's like 2050, and I look back and I'm like, man, wild boy, where having a beard at his wedding, mm -hmm. but like right now. Uh, clean shaving was simply not not something I was going to do. Yeah, uh, Barrett, we need to issue a mea culpa. Um, we discussed a, a certain ski brand on the last uh -huh, episode, uh -huh, uh -huh. and we've we've might we might have gotten outed by a few people. Um, Montec is apparently the Shein of ski wear. Okay, so Randy, Randy, I I have not bought anything from Shein in over a year and a <laughs> half, and I probably won't ever again. So I guess our shock at the price tag of Montec was because uh, it's mass produced. Uh, apparently, it's not as quality as you'd think based on how many people were wearing it in Breckenridge. So maybe we need to scale back that. Maybe we need to scale back. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Uh, but but what you got? You give me some context. What exactly were people saying? Because I'm first. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw my Telluride buddy under the bus because he's the one who brought up Montec to me. Okay. And so I I I was taking him at his. You know, by his nature, right? This man lives well, in Telluride, so he mu like he wouldn't tell me about a brand that's sh that's Sheen level. I I don't have much of an answer for you here. Here's people, the thing. Here's the thing. Basically, like 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 ski people were like Montex. Montex not cool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 But like, but w or were they like they have got bad business practices and are there was some of that. There was some of child that. Labor. I don't know if they were utilizing child labor. <laughs> I didn't dive deep into it, um, but. I don't know. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. At the beginning of, the, of that segment, I think we were very, very upfront about the fact that we, we're skiing once every three years at this point. Yeah. We're not yeah. locals anywhere. We're doing our best. And had, had it not been for the data, but make it fashion post, I probably wouldn't have even brought up ski fashion that yeah. day. Yeah. So if you're going to listen to any ski fashion podcast, make sure it's uh, locals only. I mean, Montex, Montex, they, these jackets are still in between two and $300. So it's not like they're like seven. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. It's not like they're like, yeah, they're not $14. Um, but fine. Fine. You know what? Let me just, let me, let me get back on my bullshit. I'm only recommending $900 Arcteryx Saber SV jackets from here on, from here on out. Yep. Cause that's really, that's just what we, I should have just stuck to it. Sorry for trying to bring the low price garms to the no, podcast. We, the skies are roasting the urchins right now. And we are the urchins <laughs> right now. So we got to be a little careful on the ski front. We do have some big news coming out of the retail therapy camp. Uh, suede. 001 suede the candle is back in mm. stock uh we have a limited number back in stock for a little bit we had some extra supplies so we thought we'd put that together uh tossing this out to retail therapy listeners before we shoot it out to the masses so go get one if you want one uh but if you're listening to this episode and you haven't gotten one yet you'll probably see some marketing from the sunday scary side of the things well be be careful because uh, i'm 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 aware of the the, the units of the restock mm -hmm. it's really it's a small restock i'll it tell is. you that much yeah. it is yeah so is. you know Keep an eye out, though. We, we've got this week's episode presented to you by Early Bird CBD. Early Bird gummies are a recreational hemp product that contain around 2.5 milligrams of natural THC and around 12.5 milligrams of CBD in each gummy. These things are formulated for fun and to make you feel good. I was out at a wedding last week, waiting in line at the bar. Yeah. Had someone come up to me and say, hey, would you like an Early Bird? And I, 
I was just so tickled. I was like, I love that not, you don't you don't even just like bring early bird to the function, but you brought this on a plane with you to bring to the function because you enjoy it so much. Was this you asking yourself if you wanted an early it bird? It could have been. It could have been. <laughs> uh, those early b- birds flew out of that napkin as fast as possible, and everyone was just very much enjoying themselves. Early Birds and Austin Company that just we've been with them for a long time now. Yeah. Uh, these guys were one of the first ever advertisers with us. And if you haven't tried one of these, it's good for a little buzz. It's good for a night's sleep. It's good for pretty much anything. Give it a shot. Get 20% off your first purchase using promo code Wix, W-I-C-K-S, at earlybirdcbd.com. Again, that's 20% off using promo code Wix at earlybirdcbd.com. This is a one-time use code. So if you are purchasing from them and you want to get that discount, make sure you load that card up. I promise you, you will not be upset about it. I've not seen something uh, as as in the vein of retail therapy as what we're about to discuss. Uh, we teased it at the beginning of the episode, uh, Baby Girl Men. And uh, it, an article from Vogue Fashion has really has really done a pretty darn good job of, of explaining uh, why we are so infatuated with uh, such types as Jacob Elordi, Paul Mescal, all those, at all. Barry Cogan, Harry Styles, Pedro Pascal, Lewis Hamilton. Pedro, Pedro getting the nod here is great. Yeah, I, mean, I was worried the ageist uh, would take him out of here. Yeah, yeah, but but um, I think so. Uh, did you watch? Uh, did you watch the Pedro Pascal SNL? <sighs> I did. Okay, I did. He really like he he. I, I feel like that was the first time that he kind of like was out in like like I feel like there had been a pocket a corner of the internet kind of worshiping him mm-hmm. and then his SNL was very much like he kind of it felt like he fully embraced his his baby girldom and like he did the sketch with like Sarah Paulson where she was mother and he was father right and mm-hmm. like they were like doing all the, the slang terms and like really really leaning into the social media like frenzy around him. He seems extremely self-aware. Yes. And, and I mean si- that as a compliment. since then, he seems to just have been like on every red carpet, like in all the baby girl fits, like very gender bending, like just just fully putting it out there. Um, almost almost like intentionally going against his Last of Us character in a way. Yeah. You know, like very like 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 juxtaposing those two. Um, so he definitely belongs on this list. I'm glad he's here as well. Was there anyone? Uh, so I'll, I'll explain what a baby girl is per the, the article. It says baby girl is a designation that's given out when we find that a person is not just hot, but interesting, worthwhile. This was from Evan Ross Katz. Do you follow him on Instagram? I don't, I don't think I follow him, but <clears throat> his, excuse me, his content like, like makes its way across my Cross my screen all the time. I yeah. very much enjoy his content. The the, the pop I, culture stuff that he covers is always very much I in should the vein give him of things. You should. Yeah. It's all stuff that's in the vein of things that we enjoy, and it's all very entertaining. I respect. I don't. I've never actually watched uh, Sex in the City start to front or start to back, but I do enjoy Sex in the City episodes, and he's like obsessed with it. Mm-hmm. It's a good follow. Uh, but he uh, he essentially says it's someone that we've more or less universally decided to love, which makes sense based on our affinity for these guys. Uh, they say baby girl men are also typically comfortable enough with their masculinity to bend the rules around gender when dressing, thinking like runway looks. Uh, a classic example of this would be Jacob Elordi carrying uh, women's handbags or mm-hmm. traditionally women's handbags. Uh, it says uh, they interviewed uh, Brit Theodora who is a stylist for Pete Davidson and Celine Song, I believe. And it says, they're leading men in movies that we're all gushing over and seeing them in street style moments, having fun with fashion, not just on the red carpet. Uh, And it's satisfying her as a stylist. She's noticed more gifting from women's and gender neutral brands for men lately, plus more male direct requests for handbags. I get it. Yeah, no, we we were actually just talking in the in the Haller offices. You know, we're, we're paying attention to all of this as well. And uh, January is kind of like Fashion Month, right? A lot of shows going on, Paris Fashion Week, et cetera, Pity Omo, uh, et cetera. Um, and and we were just noticing how accessorized the men's looks were this month. Yeah, lots of handbags out there. And I I we, I, I said I was like a Lordy effect. Yeah, this man can't stop carrying handbags around, and now we all need handbags. Mm-hmm. Like that, that I, I fully attribute that to, to him. I've, um, it would be great. It, like if I kind of wish the world would just reset and everyone got to bring a bag everywhere they went without being looked at. It's like, why is that dude carrying a handbag? Yeah, I would love to pack all my shit in a bag and just like roll out to the bar. I mean, look at this up up here. This photo that they chose of a lordy. Like, like he he's just he's completely flipped it on its head, right? With like the wraparound sunglasses <laughs> and like the all black look and then 
Yeah, he just popped a he popped a dope ass handbag on top. Right? It, it must be nice. They know one of the bags, the Roe women's bag. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a bestseller. The Rose Margot bag. Margot bag. Yeah. And I get it. Like, uh, um, if you look at that bag, it's it's a very like masculine bag. But if I saw a woman carrying it, I wouldn't be like, oh, why are you carrying that? It does kind of give a little bit uh, old timey doctor. Mm, making mm-hmm. house visits like a doctor's bag sure, but like sure. if a guy's going to carry this bag i don't even think i'd flinch if i saw a guy carrying like the black version of this bag because i'd be like oh that's a pretty cool like briefcase duffel whatever because mm-hmm. it's just kind of a a more masculine looking thing but I, that might be the entry point into uh <laughs> well I, I just saw that that by george was wrapping up their pre-orders for fall 24 r- the row margo bags i saw that on their instagram account yeah so did you did you cop one a yeah, couple. Yeah, you yeah. had to get a couple. Right, you right. had to get a couple. Well, you know that I already have the full entire uh, new Phoebe Philo collection. Yeah, obviously. I feel like I needed her. You know, her, her, she, her, she used. No, wait, I'm, I'm botching. I'm botching stuff. I'm, I'm mixing up Celine in the row right now. Excuse me, <laughs> but I. Let me uh let, let me recalibrate and just say that I feel like the Rose Margo bag would really pair nicely with all of my uh, Phoebe Philo stuff. I, I swear to God, Barrett, if one of us is not carrying a handbag at the Kentucky Derby <laughs> this year on the red carpet, it's going to be a devastating time. You know, speaking of places where I'm not sure I'd be comfortable uh, carrying a handbag. Yeah, Kentucky the, Derby the dur- might be on that Derby list. Derby might be on that list. Here's yeah. the thing. Like yeah. maybe we maybe we try to finagle our wives into the trip and so they can carry a bag and uh-huh. we can just use them for the red carpet real quick. That's true. We That's can get true. some double use bags and just get out there and do yeah. it although who was that one there was that men's fa- uh, fashion influencer that walked the red carpet just before us and right after a uh, famous dog i believe mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. we were in the heavy know, hitters ma- <laughs> maybe if we can rope him in you know because he's already got such a such a large manly platform uh if if he if we can get him to carry a bag with us then i'd I, then i think we'd be set my biggest regret of the entire day which I don't have many because I feel like we had a pretty flawlessly executed derby last year. My biggest regret was not meeting up with him and realizing who he was at the time. Damian Broderick is the Damian name. Broderick, and there he is. I love his content on Instagram. He's a Manchester United supporter. He appeared as though he was pretty alone on this trip. Not mm-hmm. alone in the emotional sense, more of the physical sense, but I also can't speak to his emotions. We could have made <laughs> friends with this guy and been like like killing it with him all day. Yeah. yeah. Drinking, yeah. drinking, uh drinking whiskey with the lads. That's right. But yeah, he was he was a good looking dude, and he was dressed very well. I mean, my guy has one point four million followers. You yeah, know? yeah, getting a little Peaky Blinders look going here. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's just ASMR getting dress content. Like, what's better? He's uh, also got like a little nephew that he gets dressed with sometimes, and the nephew's great. Yeah. Oh, I, he's one of my favorite follows. Do you have anything in your wardrobe currently right now that's gender bending? Yeah, I, I mean, I would say that I, I would point to some some kind of like like like. The the impetus for for the gender bending stuff in my wardrobe, I would say, is like the lace crochet shirts. Yeah, that's the that's as about as close as I can and, get right and now. And then and 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 to take that like a, a little bit further, I have like a sleeveless kind of like like pink tie dye lacy our legacy top that I wore to the Harry Styles concert. Okay. Uh, in twenty twenty two, twenty twenty three, I can't remember. Uh, and then I have a I have like a like a sheer like purple. Uh, top from needles that I've actually never worn before, but it's in the closet. It's not. It's not making its way out at any time. It hasn't soon. made it. It had. I. I mean, I'm. I'm hoping that like it feels like a very like wit. Like it. It needs to be layered. You know okay. what I mean. What if? Okay. So I'm, just. I'm, I'm hoping to bust it out. Just spitballing here. Soon. Yeah. Just uh-huh, spitballing uh-huh. here. What if for the after party at your wedding, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. decided that you were going to take some inspiration from <laughs> David and Victoria Beckham's wedding and right, you actually and go, just went full purple that, that, that with is your a, sheer needles top? Yeah, that that would be a good opportunity for it, for sure. Yeah, I, yeah. I've always wanted a bag that I can carry around, mainly because of watching so much soccer growing up and all the dudes walking in with their like toiletry bags. And like now that dudes are just walking around with with handbags, I'm starting to really question why I don't have like everything with me. I would right. love a bag where I can just toss in a light sweater or maybe like a, maybe even just a whole new shirt if it's a hot day in Austin, Texas. I would mm-hmm. love to just have a full change of clothes in my bag. There's def- there's plenty of bags. I mean, get yourself a little Louis Vuitton millionaire bag. Like that's got that's got room for probably a change of shoes as well. As I might a, just get a rolling a suitcase and start rolling around <laughs> with that. There you go. Just start carrying your away bag with you at all at all times. I only go to hotel bars because they'll keep my bag at the front for me. It's like I really appreciate that. I mean, they say we actively review women's bag collections from selected brands such as Bottega Veneta, Loewe, and the Row, and add relevant styles directly to our men's buys. Like it's just a thing. Like it's just it is what it is now. Yeah. And I'm okay with it. Yeah. 
Is, uh, are there any baby girls that they're missing in this that we're not taking into account? I was surprised to see Lewis Hamilton on the list just because he doesn't give me the same vibe as the other guys, but maybe it's because when he, his fashion just doesn't mesh with mine as much, so I don't identify. Right. But the more I think about it, he he kind of checks out. He's a man of many many talents and many interests and many styles. Yeah, he's really spearheading the uh, the zero proof alcohol game. Okay, he, I think he just released a gin or a line of alcohol that's just completely zero proof. I don't believe that he likes the taste of tequila so much that he needs a zero proof one. I just simply don't believe it. But I'm okay with that. That wait, that's he says what now? That he, he likes the taste of straight tequila so much, oh, but he oh, doesn't oh. want to get drunk, so Got he it. just did the zero proof. And okay. I'm like. Eh. <laughs> I don't know if I believe you. <laughs> I've never been sitting there like looking to quench my thirst to being like, oh, you know what? I'm going to do two fingers of tequila right The guy now. just loves agave, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. He just he can't, can't get enough. He, he can't get enough. Um, Did you have something, Randy? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know if he fits the everyone <laughs> likes him, but the gender bending, uh, was Jared Leto on the list? Yeah, but he's he's got like, he, he kind of is like not being touched by some uh, some. Yeah, he's, outlets right now. He's a little bit. I think he's too polarizing. You, 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 you kind of got it with the age. I think he's like fifty years old. Um, he does not like whatever he's doing for his under eyes. Like, sign me up. It, he, I, I will. It, it's a nice call out though, Randy, because he did kind of like he sort of spearheaded some of this when he was the basically the full on muse and face of Alessandra Michelle's Gucci. Like he was wearing a ton of women's stuff, a lot of really like flowy silk, whip, like pull, pulled from the women's collection. Stuff that was really androgynous or, or gender neutral. Um, so the, it, he definitely is is, is kind of like part of the style lane of this. But as as Evan Rotskast uh, says here, it's someone that we've more or less universally decided to love. And he's not universally and, and I, loved right, right now. Exactly. And I think that's the key is that is that all these people like nobody really has a bad thing to say about them except for maybe the ladies who Paul Mescal has uh, ran away from on the streets of uh, of. Um, Belfast, but even <laughs> even them, they have to look at that situation. And be like, eh, kind of funny, kind of funny. It probably weren't gonna, it probably wasn't gonna marry the guy. Uh, I did like one quote from uh, Evan Ross Katz where he said, "We've eliminated, in some senses, the idea that to take an interest in fashion somehow makes you effeminate or gay, or says something about you who, or who you are as a person. Now, to be interested in fashion is cool." And I do think that's like a big thing to take from this. Is yeah. that like like a lot of these guys are pushing the envelope so much when it comes to their style. Uh, just their casual style that they and they note this in the column that like so many people are taking or so many brands are taking note of that that they're now just shifting there. It's not they say it's not a blip on the radar. It's more of a paradigm shift, and I I think I agree. No one's looking at like a lordy and, and being upset right now. Yeah, yeah. Is, it was, uh, I also liked the, the comparison to to like when, when men say that they like uh, they they like seeing their women in in their oversized tops or hoodies or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and, and for, for some women, that's, it, it's kind of the same thing here. The quote is, uh, they really like all of these Hollywood heartthrobs and these little tops carrying these little bags. Hey, <laughs> we're just, we're just doing a Jersey swap. It's just a classic so, Jersey swap. Yeah. Well, like, look, like some, I mean, this is, this is not unique and this is not something that like is surprising to anybody, but we've already talked about the row, like Mary Kate and Ashley, I truly do like that. They kind of wear like really baggy stuff. That's mm -hmm. not like it's, it's almost like much more masculine than a lot of the stuff you'd see out there on yep. women these days. Yeah. Uh, Timmy Chalamet feels like very much like the quintessential baby girl, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, Troy Sivan maybe could be on the, yeah, could be on this I'm not list. as familiar. Uh, and then I would be remiss if I didn't mention, you know, not, not so much fitting in with the style elements here. But uh, but Zach Efron, he definitely would have been a baby girl. Yeah, right. Yeah, he was born too soon. He was. Yeah, he's just a little. He's yeah. probably punching air right now. Yeah. Did he get nominated for anything in the Oscars? He did not. The Iron Claw. I don't think the Iron Claw, as for as much uh, press and hype as it's receiving, I don't think it got nominated for a single Oscar. I unfortunately don't think I'm even going to watch the Oscars this year. As I don't really have any. I, I I don't have any horses in the race. I've hardly seen any of the movies that are nominated, and I just don't know if I care. It's too stuffy right now. I mean, I gotta, I gotta, you know, they, they, it did its job for me. The, the fact that both Barbie and Oppenheimer are <clears throat> all over the place on the nominations. And then, I mean, honestly, the way they shot themselves in the foot with the, with the no Margot, no Greta, uh, nom, nom. Crazy. Did they just want the pub? Like, did the, I, any publicity is good publicity? We, I don't get it. We talked a little bit about this on, on OCC's Patreon episode yesterday, but I, I think what ha I don't think they had any control over it. I think the voting, I think the nominations all happens in like a ranked, yeah, like proportional system. And so everybody just like puts in their like top 10 in order. And then like a computer algo like spits out the win, like who got the noms. 
and they saw the results and I'm sure they were like, ah, shit. They probably just need to, like, they already expanded Best Picture. Why not just expand the other fields? Yeah. I don't, I, I think I said this on Circling Back earlier this week. I don't really understand why you need to have five. I, I think if you have like a certain amount of nominees, that makes sense. You can just have as many as you want. And even if that's just a PR move, maybe it's not the worst thing in the world right, for you. Right. The Oscars is already having a no tough enough time as of late. I don't know if uh, they're making it any easier on themselves. Man, uh, this Burberry look on Alordi is super, super badass. Speaking of Alordi, Will, did you happen to watch his SNL episode this weekend? I'm a little frustrated. I'm a little frustrated. I was out of town this weekend, and we didn't have our normal Sunday. That's right. The that's Lions right. Yep, have really yep. been eating into my uh, casual TV watching right, time on right. Sunday, yeah, which is yeah, fine. That's which good. Is a, that's a good, good problem good to have. Problem to have. Yeah, Thank you yeah. for wearing your Lions sweater today. Of course, of course. Happy Fisherman Sweater Friday, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. We're mm -hmm. both chonking it up today, huh? Yeah. We've had some chunky sweaters these last couple mm -hmm, episodes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, I haven't watched it yet because it's one of those things where I want to sit down with Sally and watch it all the way through yeah, and fast yeah. forward through commercials. I She was asleep early the other night. I queued it up on YouTube TV and started watching and I just felt guilty. I couldn't do it. <laughs> I couldn't do it without her. Well, um, I'll be curious to get your takes. I don't want to like, I don't want to torpedo it too badly for for you. It wasn't great. It wasn't, wasn't, uh... It was kind of one note. It they didn't. It didn't have any viral moments on uh, the timeline. That's because they chose to lean into one thing: the fact that Jacob Elordi is very hot and tall, and almost every sketch felt like it was about that, and it was kind of a miss for me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, a little bit disappointing, but I'm, I'm I am hopeful that they rebound with um, with our our misses sixteen hours of sleep per night. Dakota Johnson with musical guest Justin Timberlake. This we weekend. also have AO and JLo. That's right, AO and JLo the, the following week. So I'm sure they will be doing a long music video with that. <laughs> uh, our next topic is something that's uh, kind of killing me inside. Uh, I want to talk about bookshelf wealth. Have you heard of this? I've not heard about this. So this no. is uh, from uh, the New York Times book section. It says on TikTok and other digital platforms, there are, there's has been plenty. Uh, I'm sorry, I need to reset right now. On TikTok and other digital platforms. There's lately been much ado about people who own a great number of books, and this is critical, stage them in an aesthetically pleasing way. The trend called bookshelf wealth focuses on creating polished literary look, often with cozy seating, vintage decor, and pictures hung willy-nilly on the walls. Is bookshelf wealth aspirational decor or another fad that encourages overconsumption? Um, do you have any bookshelves in your place right now? Yeah, we do. We do, and they're, they're, they're chock full of books. See, we have a couple bookshelves in not our as, place. Not as aesthetically pleasing as, as this here wonderful photo, but, uh, well, we, but have know, a, we do we, our best. We moved into our new place last month, and we have this large area in our living room that is perfect for a bookshelf. I mean, it's got it's built into the wall. And when I said, oh, we're like Sally said, I wonder what are we going to put on here? I was like, well, I think I think books. She said, we don't have any books. And I was like, no, I have books. I have books that we can put on here. She's like, you don't have enough books to put on there. And I was like almost... I wasn't almost offended. I was just straight up offended. Yeah, yeah. And then as I started putting the books on the shelf, I was like, huh, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't have enough books for this shelf. And so now I've had to start putting other stuff on the shelf, uh -huh. which has actually been way more fun for me. But while we don't have bookshelf wealth, apparently, uh, it's something that I do strive for because all of this just gives me so many feelings of like – the mid '90s and when things were like not minimalistic anymore, and right, they were just all a little, cozy, a little cluttered, a little cozy. Exactly, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely falling into what I can only describe as like nook core, right? Nook core, yeah, cozy core. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I like nook core better. Um, but yeah, one thing to to keep in mind here is that you need a lot of fake books, obviously, because all of these books right here, and these books right here, and these books right here that look very perfectly aged and seem to have the same spine. Yeah, I'm not buying it here in this uh, in what I'm guessing is a very staged photograph. Where do you stand um, on buying books solely for the aesthetic of the, the place? There's also a notable lack. I do not see any. I don't see this the Harry Potter series in here, mm -hmm. so that it's it's definitely coming down a notch for me. On Are you that sure one. it's not just a different version of it? It could be the illustrated the, version or the British. Yeah, the the, they could have the first British, edition British version. British covers. Yeah, that's 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 possible. Um, yeah, that's no. That I think buying books solely for the aesthetic is uh, that's that's bad. That's bad. I don't understand why people do it because yeah. if you're going to buy books just for the aesthetic, why wouldn't you just get like coffee table books that you already like? And like any time that I've like asked someone about a book that they bought solely for it, I'm like, oh, well, this is deflating. Like, yeah. I, I don't like that you've never opened this book before and you only bought it because it's this one color that matches the rug and like a lampshade in your place. <laughs> right. No. It just bums me out. At the very least, like bu buy books that you claim to have an interest in, in getting to someday. Yeah. 
Or quote, unquote, something quote, I've thought unquote. about doing if I really wanted to fill a bookshelf <laughs> is like one one of the best things I've done to to get some books is just going to half price books. Like it, they're all really cheap. Right. It's right down the street from us here in Austin. But just going to like a secondhand bookstore where everything's inexpensive. If you're going to do it, just go do that and get some older ones. But I almost think you have to go buy books that you've previously read in order to have like have that horse in your stable. Yeah. yeah. Like you can't just be sitting there with a bunch of classics on there and be like, oh, I've never even I've never read a Mark Twain book. <laughs> not saying you have to read a Mark Twain book. I haven't either. I saw a TikTok that referred to them as audiobook trophies. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. I like that. I would take that. Because we didn't we talk about it on here? Like I might not, I, I, even if I listen to a book and I'm at a dinner, I'm saying I read it, but I'm not yeah, going to say yeah. that I read 50 books this year if I just listened to a yeah, bunch of books. Just buy the physical copy and be like, yeah, I read it. Yeah, right here. That's a very, I, uh, uh, man, I find that question very difficult to answer. Because like you ingested the information, you 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 took yeah. in the content, like like you just happened to to multitask it while, with while you were driving, basically. Yeah. Like I, like I, I understand that there, I, I also understand that there is more of a sense of accomplishment and achievement with reading the physical book, but like that's societal though, dude. But it still feels like listening to the book counts as 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 consuming the book. Yeah, right? I agree. Like uh, to be honest, uh, I don't think I would take it in as well. If it wasn't being spoken to me sometimes, right. there's a lot of times where, especially if I'm reading fiction these days, if yeah. I'm reading fiction, I will zone out for two pages and just get so defeated yeah, that no, I have to go right. back that I'm like, go, all yes, right, yeah, I'm, fucked, yeah, I'm done yeah. with this. So. I'm done with this. Uh, I did queue up something from uh, our friends over at GQ. Uh, they're really honing in on the book trend right now, and they've put together some new hot, the, the hot guy books. They're top 12. Mm -hmm. And I've got bad news. <laughs> I don't think I'm hot based on these books. Uh, can we go through some of these <laughs> and, course, and talk about them? Uh, the first one is the uh, the Oxford World's Classics. Um, I think I, I just don't have that. Uh, I, I'm not reading Jane Austen very often. And I think this is one of those things where it's like the cheap, small paperback version of all the Oxford World's books. Okay. I mean, having a having a classic out of your back pocket really is putting out like, I am not reading this. I am just putting this in my pocket so you talk to me at the bar. Yeah. No one's yeah. ever read a Jane Austen book in the middle of a busy bar. <laughs> Yeah, only if it's a busy bar that's hosting a uh, a reading party where you're going to read for 30 minutes and then chat with your chat with your uh, your peers about what what you just read. Retail reading party when? Uh, blob covers, which is not an actual book. It's just uh, it's just filled with um, uh, the cover is just filled with amorphous daubs of warm, bright color. I think I think it's just like you're just. Th th does this have to match your outfit? Uh, no, I think it probably is good if it stands out from your outfit. Like that's the point is that this is an eye catching. Oh cover, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So it's, you're you're we're truly like bringing books into the world of accessories with with the blob covers. I think the the next one is the one that I think I'm most likely to fall into. Which which is the Penguin Modern Classics. Sure, uh, if yeah, you've ever yeah. been in an airport, you've just seen the uh, absolute pile of those. Sure, yeah, yeah. I think those are more approachable than the Oxford ones for some reason. Where where do I... Uh, uh, I'm showing my literary um, ineptitude here or, or uh, ignorance. But between Ox Oxford World's Classics and then Penguin Modern Classics... Okay, okay. So 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 the, the Oxford ones are older than the Penguin Modern Classics. They must be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, did I just see? Okay, no, hold on. I just saw a word that I want to go back on. Yeah, someone said about the Penguin Modern Classics, think of them as the unique low of book covers. Good as dependable basics, but not worth basing your personality on. <laughs> uh, they have old cloth-bound hardbacks. Okay. You can't yeah. bring. You can't put a hardback in your back pocket at the airport. Not in your back pocket. That's got to go into your your side cargo. I think. If I saw someone walking around with one of these in a, in a bar, I would assume that they had drugs inside of it. Well, this is the type of book that 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 we just talked about, where you're just you're see, you're finding this and you're buying it because you think it'll look good on the bookshelf, right? Yeah, it's, it's got a patina to it that that you're really gunning for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They have Notting Hill editions, which I think is just a similar version to what we were talking about before. The Fourth Estates Joan Didion series, like, uh, I feel like I'd be found out immediately if I showed up with this book. Yeah. I'd have someone come up to me and be like, all right, tell me anything about her. I'd be like, ah. Uh, the Penguin Classics are on here. Ellen books, these ones are kind of a vibe over here. Uh, it's a, it's a, they say it's a little, little known but pioneering publisher worth getting in on. It's Red Spine Classic series are mostly dedicated to revivaling classic travel writing by everyone from E.M. Forster to your favorite, Jan Morris. Mm, right. Or yeah, Jan yeah. Morris. <laughs> <laughs> Could be either. I, it's either or, really. 
the one of the hardest ones for me to swallow is if I saw someone in the in the bar reading uh, like poetry. Um, I think poetry is having a little renaissance in the UK right now for some okay. reason. It's like right. flying off the shelves, which I actually appreciate. But like, come on, come on. You're releasing a poetry book pretty soon, aren't you? I mean, all your haikus from the Sunday Scaries newsletter. See, we can we could make that happen if any publishers out there want to publish some uh, Sunday haikus. That'd be a good uh, that'd be a good book for the back of the toilet, I think. Yeah, I mean that 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 I'm not I'm not kidding. That's got legs, baby. Have you uh, have you read any of the uh, the City Lights Pocket Poets? That's just a bunch of old like old poems and uh, and lunch poems. Apparently, Frank O'Hara's lunch poems. No, I love a good no. lunch poem. I, I start my lunch every day with one. With one poem. That's how yeah. I start. That's how I wet my palate. Yeah, I've learned that I, I I don't own any of these, so therefore I cannot be hot in the wild right now. Well, I think you know s- somewhere I don't exactly know where, but like, a, I mean, the number one is is reading plays. Just reading book. Okay. Just reading yeah. a play. I actually yeah. think I do better reading plays than and then like traditional fiction because I think I'd understand the dialogue better than I would understand a lot of the uh, the pictures that yeah. people are painting. I like these that. Days. Maybe some one act plays. I love a good one act play. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. But so, okay, somewhere within here, I don't know if it's the if it's the Penguin Classics, the Penguin Modern Classics, the Oxford Old Worlds, but like your Madame Bovary's, your Scarlet Letters, your 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 your. Uh, Sound Catcher in the Rise, like you know, th- those are falling in here somewhere. I think you right? got to be careful though, because Catcher in the Rise got the stigma about it as of late. Last few years, p- girls don't like guys whose favorite book is Catcher in the Rye. Okay, well, that, okay, that to be fair, that does make sense. Yeah, where where are we at on Gatsby in the in modern climate? I don't know. I'm I'm an F. Scott Fitzgerald guy, but yeah. in my readings of F. Scott Fitzgerald, which I surprisingly actually have read uh, numerous of his books, uh, Gatsby wasn't wasn't my favorite. Mm, mm-hmm. I liked. Uh, I like Tender as the Night a lot. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I went through an F. Scott Fitzgerald phase for a few years, and I, I just started. And it takes me forever to finish any book by him, but I truly do enjoy his stuff. How about Hemingway? Hemingway, I mean. Old Man in the Sea? Yeah. Old Man in the Sea is a, uh, it's a quick read. Yeah. I actually, I, I did a little, I don't know you'd call it a B flare. Randy, it's a book flare. Yeah, it's a book flare. Yeah, I did a B flare from my Instagram like a couple Christmases ago when I was reading Old Man in the Sea. I just tossed it up on the story, like, yeah, I'm on vacation. Okay, yeah, yeah I'm yeah, reading yeah. a 120 yeah. page book right now. What about some uh, R.L. Stein? No, we're not doing R.L. Stein at the bar. <laughs> I think I'm going to that. Actually, be a good play weekend. in October. The one with what's the one with the uh, the dummy on it? The, or, not a living dummy. Yeah, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, I'm going to start rocking some goosebumps to the yeah, bar. Yeah, if you if you if you pull up with the goosebumps paperback sticking out the back pocket. You, I, I think that that a certain, oh yeah, there's a certain you know type of lady. If that, you do that in October, like that's totally fair game. Yeah, you're you are pandering a bit. You're pandering, but it, but yeah, yeah. I think it's uh, wow. Googling goosebumps um, re- gives you equal equal <laughs> in, on Google Image Shirts gives you uh, <laughs> equal parts goosebumps book covers and also just actual goosebumps. Just people on, giving you goosebumps on, on people's skin. <laughs> I don't know. I might bust out a Calvin and Hobbes cartoon book. Mm, those are big though, right? Do they do they uh Yeah, I need a pocket size version of that. Maybe I'll just get some old clippings of Calvin and Hobbes and then take yeah. them out of my back pocket and set them out on the table in front of me and read those. What about just like a like 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 how about Moby Dick? That, that that's got to be on there somewhere, Let's right? Let's just put like Atlas Shrugged in there and just have like a real thick boy sticking out of the back pocket. That at, yeah, Atlas Shrugged. I'm not sure which one's going to turn off more women. Um Catcher in the Rye or Atlas Shrugged. It's going to be tough. Probably one and two. Do you think – are there any companies out there that are talking right now that are like, we need to make our back pockets larger? No, the Penguin <laughs> Classics are this size. We need to make – they need to be perfect for the Penguin Classics. I like the idea of just like an additional pocket that is like the book The pocket. book pocket, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If someone put out some book work – some book workwear pants, uh-huh. I, I would consider getting those. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I can put my – I can put my, my pen that I never use in this pocket Any and then more? I can put my book in the other pocket. Yeah. It's just really perfect. You ever read any Capote? No. Yeah, me neither. No. Didn't even watch the movie. <laughs> this uncultured swine here on Retail Therapy. Oh, you don't want to talk to me about reading. <laughs> like, for someone who made a career out of writing for three years straight, like, I read less than anyone could ever imagine. I, I think, honestly, I, I'm, I'm, I'm being dead serious. I think high school English classes ruin reading for a lot of people. Oh, I never even read. They put you through the ringer of just all these, like, trash classics books that are boring and slogs and hard to get through. And it like I feel like I, that that puts that that puts the kibosh on a lot of people's like appetite for reading. I hated it. Yeah. I hated it. That's and that's always been my biggest thing. I don't like being told what to read. And yeah. so anytime that I was tasked with reading something, especially like when the whole class had to read something, I was just like, uh, I don't want to sit here and talk about the same shit that everyone's talking about. Yeah, just killed me. 
killed me. Yeah, helped me figure out how could I do it without doing it, which in itself is a lesson. Right. How to get yeah. around it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I I did a full, like, five-minute speech on a, a book that I had not read <laughs> one single page of in front of the class, and the entire time I was looking at the person that told me about the book thinking, if you led me astray here and I get pulled aside at the end of the class because I just described nothing that happens in the <laughs> book, I'm going to kill you. Got an A. Thank Got you. an A. Hey, today's episode is also sponsored by our friends over at Indeed. They're driven, or we're all driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need to hire Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. You can ditch the busy work. You can use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree that Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. One of the things that we love about Indeed is that it just makes hiring in one place so much easier. If you've ever run your own company or have ever been a part of the hiring process, you know how difficult it can be. It's just not easy to find good candidates if you don't have tools working for you. So leverage over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day. Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. So the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. They've got over 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast and listeners to this show will get 70 uh, a 75 dollars sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at indeed.com slash scaries just go to indeed.com slash scaries right now and support our show by saying you heard about indeed on this podcast indeed.com slash scaries terms and conditions do apply but if you need to hire you need indeed Barrett, I see you on your phone right now, and yeah. I, I think I think I know what you're doing right now. Are what do you, you think I'm doing? Are you on Spotify looking up your day list? I, that's exactly what I was doing, yes. Have yes. you seen more about the day list lately? I feel like I've seen more about day list than anything else on Spotify outside of uh, – what's it called um spotify wrapped every right, year yes 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 they've uh they they have seemingly found a way to, to harness a bit of that same energy with daylist the truth is um i had never heard of a daylist nor did i know to search for it on my spotify and then one day i believe it was last week uh the the work slack uh and like the random channel started chirping about daylist people started posting their daylist and i i was very i i was the outlier here i said you know i was i was Barrett, Boomer Barrett, and I was like, "What's Daylist?" Um, Explaining, I, I felt so yeah. young when Sally asked me how to find the Daylist, and I was like, oh, "You just, <laughs> you just search Daylist, and it'll automatically populate." Like, yeah, like, oh, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah. So that's exactly what I did. I said to say, "What's Daylist? How do I, how do I get my Daylist?" Uh, and then I got my Daylist. But apparently, there's, I'm, I'm hearing, I'm hearing, I'm, I'm hearing a little that that. That it might not, it might be a little rigged. They might be putting the same songs on people's day lists. I mean, I'd believe it. It's yeah. all AI generated. I yeah. did read that, and I saw you know I have my hesitations with AI just in general. Um, are you willing to say what your day list is for this uh, Friday morning that we're recording yeah. on? Yeah, hell yeah. My day list is currently. Uh, let's see here. Um, it is <laughs> sad writer morning. So, okay. That sounds kind of chill. It's a nice little rainy day here in Austin, Texas. But like, okay, give me, give me, give me the first three songs on your day list right now. Tell me what it's called, and then give me the first three songs. Okay, mine is Festival Southern Rock Friday Morning. Oh wow, okay. Because <laughs> uh, I li apparently I listen to guitar and old country on Friday mornings. Uh, today we have uh, for my first three songs I have uh, Walking for Your Love by Widespread Panic, uh, Silvio by Joe Russo's Almost Dead, a, a Grateful Dead tribute band. And uh, Man with a Plan by Assembly of Dust and someone else that I've never heard of. A lot of these songs okay, on here right, okay. are songs that I've truly never even heard of on this list. I, I think you have such such unique taste in music, or at least di like I have, I, I have very basic bitch taste in music. At, you know, as discussed on the, uh, the on on one of our Canoe Club episodes, right? Well, uh, yeah, you're still, you like the Adam Levine old cuts, right? That's like, true. That's true. Adam Levine, Maroon Five deep cuts. Yeah, that's that's my shit. Um, but like. But but my first three right now are Say Don't Go, Taylor's version, Logical, Olivia Rodrigo, and I Knew You Were Trouble, Sabrina Carpenter. And like I, I'm positive that if you just like – if your most played artists are Drake and Taylor Swift, like these are the three at the top of your list. Probably. Right now. Probably. You know what I mean? So I think it, it's very much like – it's it's very batched and grouped. So even though they're giving you maybe like a different name for your day list, I feel, I'm guessing it's the same day list for like 40 different 
versions, and then the, and then there's just a bunch of those. Well, I uh, I looked mine up in the middle of the Lions game the other day at halftime, and it was a Sunday afternoon, and the the day list that it spit out to me was soul crushing pumpkin spice Sunday afternoon. Uh, with top artists on there, Boy Genius, Big Thief, and Jenny Lewis. And yeah. I was just like, okay, like this maybe is a little too accurate because like I have been going through a Boy Genius Sunday afternoon phase, okay. I, which I don't think is healthy for your mental state. Pro- yeah. And yeah. Uh, it, it was a little jarring being like, okay, I, I my life is so on brand that even Spotify AI generated stuff is being <laughs> like, you do not like Sunday afternoons very much. <laughs> If you have a day list out there that is funny, I would like to see it. Please send that over to uh, the Retail Therapy Instagram at retail.pod because I, I I don't know. There's something about it that I find a lot of entertainment in. I'm rocking nostalgia, guilty pleasure morning. Stacy's mom gives you hell. Don't trust me. That sounds like a pretty good – that sounds like yeah. a good Friday morning playlist it, to kind of get you started for the weekend. It's like all middle school and high school like throwback pop and stuff. It's, okay. Yeah, that like, does sound that's, – that's, I like that. I, I want to like see more, if I'm ever on like I-35 driving up to Dallas or something. If it's like – I don't know why, but whenever I drive to Dallas, I always end up listening to like 90s country. And I want to see if it like spits me some like road trip music if I'm like out of the out of the normal geographic location. Well, I, maybe I don't hope it has like that much information on us, actually. Yeah. I mean, it's de- I, 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 my guess is it knows where you are. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, you and I both did a little personal research this week. Yeah. Uh, normally, when we come up with something that we want to do uh, or taste, we never actually get to it until after we talk about it. But today, I have some very good news. If you've been on Twitter as of late in the last couple of weeks, you've probably seen a lot of people putting up on the timeline that they've been eating a scoop of ice cream with uh, some olive oil drizzled over it, as well as some Malden sea salt. I don't know how to say that. Is it Malden? Is it Maldon? Is it Maldon? Maldon? I think I just, that's, that's what I've always said. Maldon? I, I was trying to I was trying to bougify it for a long time, so yeah. I was saying Maldon, and then someone Maldon. was like, it's, I think it's just Malden. Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't overdo it. <laughs> um, it's called gelato con olio in Italy. And uh, while this is not a new phenomenon, it has really popped up on social media way more than it had, or like for some reason in the last like couple weeks. Yeah, I, I saw that you posted this about on, uh, on Instagram that you were you were you were dabbling, um, and I said, "Oh shit, I, I I better I better give this a little taste test." And this was actually last night. I didn't really it, I didn't really want to have dessert last night. I usually do. I'm usually have, have a sweet tooth, but but last night I I kind of had to force myself. Um, and, but when I was Googling, I like, I looked for the trend. I looked for the TikToks. I did see a bunch dating back, you know, to like 2021. Yeah. But it also sounds like maybe there's been a, a, a bit of a bump again in the, in the trend and the popularity over the last two to three weeks. I think it's the Dua Lipa effect. The Dua Lipa. Well, there, I mean, that's a good, that's a great effect. She you know? did a, uh, she did an interview in December on some podcast and she said, uh, she said something, he was asking about her favorite desserts and she said she actually really likes this. Chocolate ice cream is that good. What about proper Italian no. gelato? No, but you know what I love? Mm. So I get vanilla ice cream and I put olive oil on it and sea salt. I don't know, so many people that I've showed it to, I've I've brought to, to the dark side. Probably it's, brought to tears. But it's so good. You have to try it. I think it. we should all try this tonight. <laughs> Everyone listening needs to try. Um, yeah, to let, let me know what you think. <laughs> let, let me know. Let me know in the comments, review. guys. Thumbs up, thumbs down, subscribe. Well, she also uh, put out a tweet on April 7th, 2022, with four photos, one of her uh, eating an ice cream cone, a bikini photo, a dress photo, and just a vibe shot. (laughs) Uh And it just says olive oil ice cream for the win. So she's been she's been riding for this for a very long time. Yeah. Yeah. (sighs) Let me ask you before I get your review of it. Mm -hmm. What ingredients did you use? So I, I used a vanilla ice cream that I had in the freezer. It is some brand that I'm, I'm not even going to be able to think of. Uh, it's it's not my favorite vanilla ice cream. Let me start by saying that it's totally fine. It is totally fine, but it is not. It's not gelato. It's not super bougie. It's basically like the cheapest one that Central Market sells. That's not the H E B. Uh, See, creamy creations. Sally bought creamy creations, which is traditionally not my favorite. Don't love how creamy the creamy creations actually is. Yeah, this is what I had: Hudsonville Creamery blend. And I'm I'm getting the sense based on on the on on the videos that I've seen that like a, a more a, gel, a more gelato style okay. is going to work better for this. Okay. So that that this is what I started with. Then I used the um, little bit of Brightland olive oil, uh, the one called Alive. And again, 
This is I, I th this is I don't want to gas up my own palate here, uh, but like there's a lot of nuance in this in this particular olive oil, and it even and 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 I'll gas up Ryland as well, but like. It's got some deep kind of bold flavors mm -hmm. and on, and and it's branded as like being best for like stews, soups, potatoes. Yeah, probably wasn't like the lightest one we could have used for this cuz I use the same one. That type of thing. And so and then I had malt and sea salt. But um but overall uh, all I was getting was like the flavors of the olive oil. Right? And and so it was a little bit like it it was like too robust or something, you know. It wasn't it, it wasn't light enough for me. Yeah, yeah, and I I always I kind of agree. I kind of agree. Like it it was a lot of olive oil. I did. I, there was something about the flavor that I did really enjoy, and I think there's an iteration of this that I really truly would love. But it was good enough that I would do it again. But it wasn't good enough that I'm going to be sitting here like craving it at any point. Yeah, yeah. And I also I think you're right. Like Micah told me at one point that a cocktail is only as good as its worst ingredient. And so th that kind of rings true here. If I didn't like the ice cream in the, if it's not my favorite vanilla in the first place, I probably wasn't going to fall in love with it. And so I think, yeah, I think I would, I would do it again. And if a restaurant was serving it and, and I was craving it, I'd be like, absolutely. Let's totally. do that. Yeah. And I think if you, you know, if you go to a, a, a Italian restaurants, I'm sure there, there are some that, that are serving gelato con olio, um, or even like you think about something like an olive oil cake, which is utilizing an olive oil in a, in a, in a sweet way rather, rather than a savory one. And that stuff's really good. A lot of the times, it's got like a richness, a butteriness to it. Um, but yeah, I think you need the. I, I, for me, I kind of think you need the right mix of ingredients here. You need the right ice cream, and you need the right olive oil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would do it again. I enjoyed it mostly, but I, I, I just, I, I, I would maybe even do less olive oil next time. Just, uh, yeah, just to, I, I, I just only to, did for a drizzle, my at-home recipe. Um, but yeah, uh, how would you compare it? You still out there making cottage cheese ice cream? No, yeah, no. Our ever since uh, ever since Charlie fast, was huh? born, the the our our ice cream machine has really taken a backseat. Yeah, it's been tough. Yeah. I need I need the summer months to to kick up a little <laughs> bit so that we can uh, really fire that thing up and cool down a little bit. Um, I our next subject today is I'm head over heels in love with this guy. Uh, I posted this guy yesterday to the Sunday Scaries Instagram account. Uh, this is a I believe a Danish singer. Could be incorrect here. Let me check his Wikipedia page, okay, which I've noted see. is the most depressing Wikipedia page I've ever seen. This is a uh, Dries. He's Rol a Dutch singer. I'm sorry, Dries uh, Rolvink. Ro 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 Roelvink. I'm gonna go with Rolvink. Rolvink. Let's go with Rolvink. Yeah. Um, I didn't know who this guy was. Apparently, he's a known singer over in Europe, and apparently, he has not made his way over to the United States as of yet. But uh, yesterday might have been his his real uh, coming out party when it came to the United States, and this was because of a TikTok that was put up of him trying some wine. Uh, what happened? Oh, sorry. I thought he went private on TikTok. I was like, you can't go private <laughs> on TikTok when you're this guy. Um, he does the most aggressive initial tasting of a bottle of wine that you can possibly do. Yeah, it's by. It's very much by the book. It's like somebody kind of. It's almost like somebody just taught him all of the things that you're supposed to do in a way. You know, it's it's super like it's very literal. It's very deliberate. Um, I saw a lot of people posting this uh, from Scaries. By the way, did this do? Did this do numbers for you? It did numbers. I, I I think this is just the social media part of me talking. I think the alcohol portion of it stifled the growth of it because it was a scenario where I've never seen the shares outweigh the likes in a way that it did. Interesting. And so I think the people that were seeing it were sharing it at an insane clip. And I think it just wasn't getting served to as many people. But okay. it did absolute numbers. And I saw this guy all over Twitter yesterday with people using captions that had nothing to do with wine tasting. It was just like me setting up a spreadsheet at work. That's whatever. Like just classic meme format stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Barrett, when you get a, if you're, if you're the person that orders a bottle of wine at a restaurant, how do you handle this, uh, this micro exchange? Well, I like to, do, I like to be the person ordering a bottle of wine at a restaurant, unless I'm having dinner with somebody that I know knows more about wine mm -hmm. than, than I do. Yeah. In which case I, 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 you know, I pass the baton. Um, I, I do a, a little mini version of this. I definitely don't pick up the glass and tilt it sideways to like, look, you know, no, uh, my at, favorite thing that this guy's doing, and, him holding it directly out yeah. and gazing directly into it is such an aggressive move. Yeah. Yeah. But I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of put, I'll do a little Star Trek hand on the base of the glass and maybe give it a little bit of a spin, you know, kind of aerate it a little bit, let it breathe for, for just a moment. And then I might do this. I might do a quick sniff, you know, just like nose straight in the glass, just to you know to to kind of to ready my palate that I my aforementioned palate. 
Um, and then I'll give it a little sip. Now, I think some of the comments that were made on Scaries is like, like basically like literally who has ever sent the bottle back. <laughs> and it's got to be like below 1%. And it's really like it's genuinely from what I understand, it's basically like the the only thing that ever gets sent back. And the reason that they are doing this in the first place, it, it it's like tradition from 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 when wines were like not kept as well and not always climate controlled in the restaurant. And most of what we're ordering is probably newer than like. 2015 i mean honestly probably what we're typically ordering at restaurants in the you know is is 2020 2021 that type of thing right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you're ordering a bottle that's like the 1982 chateau latrec or whatever that you're, you're testing to, see, to make sure that the bottle's not corked yeah that the bottle hasn't been corked yeah I don't even know if I would know if it was corked at that point. I'd just be like, oh, this is a this is such a nice bottle that I've never tasted a wine that is like this. Like <laughs> I I would yeah. be like, no, no, that's great. That's great. Put it down. And and I mean, I guess the thought is like if you order this bottle and you taste it and you're just like, nah, nah I don't like that. Like, I guess they'll get you a different one, but I've lit I've never seen anybody do it. There's I've never always seen the part of me. Send the bottle back. It's such an it's it seems like such an unnecessary pleasantry for people like us who just aren't like wine snobs in, yeah. in the greater sense. And so I always like feel rushed when it's happening. Like, no, just put the bottle down or whatever. It, it's but very, I also yeah. want to honor the tradition the of pageantry. doing it and yeah. trying it and whatever. Yeah. But I feel like such a I I just feel like such a noob when I look up and I'm like, yeah, that's great. Like, of course it's great. Like, <laughs> I, there's no way I'm sending it back. Uh, maybe they should do. May, maybe like restaurants should just have like a like a dividing line. Like bottles over a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. They'll go. They'll do this song and dance. Yep. Bottles under a hundred dollars. We're just bringing. We're just setting down the bottle. That's for you. fair. I'd be okay with that. I'd be okay with that. If if somebody said something like, "Why didn't you let me taste that before?" and the, and the waiter said, "Well, this was under a hundred dollars," I would be like, "You know what? Great call. Great call. We're not. We're not here to uh, to try the next great vintage. That's right. That's right. Do it with Josh." Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, they, that, yeah, that's the if thing. They, if they, they if they bring out the Josh and pour you a little taste, like please stop. If you if if you see me at a restaurant in the near future and I am doing this, just know that I'm doing it for video purposes <laughs> and I'm not an asshole. Because <laughs> I will absolutely be recreating this video at some point. Uh, are you familiar with Campbell Hunt Pucket? I'm not. This is oh not, man. Yeah, okay, no. okay. This was a leap of faith here. This was a leap of faith. I have had this couple brought up to me numerous times in the last week to the point where I was like, all right, I got to talk about these two. I get the feeling, and I don't know a ton about them because I have not been an a, like a, a, a hardcore follower, but uh, this is a couple who seems to be a Southern couple. Um, I think the real reason that they are are super famous isn't because of their the content as you would take it normally. I think it's because people kind of enjoy making fun of them a little bit. Yeah, so I did see, I, I now recognize them from a Nolita Dirtbag meme. That makes sense. <laughs> checks out but, but i and, and and i did not i did not know who they were on the meme but uh but yeah okay he brings her chick-fil-a every saturday morning with a bouquet of flowers lovely uh, you lovely. know he's they're both rich they do uh they do get ready with me videos where they will get ready for like dinners together and they'll do fit checks on things that are just like great like <laughs> like he's doing fit checks on his lucchese uh ostrich boots Hell with yeah. his whatever jeans he always wears like but it's always just like blazer, white button down shirt and everything. Uh, but they also live a very extravagant life. Uh, sure. He got recently got her a Birkin bag for Christmas and then flew flew that Birkin bag over to Paris for their trip over there, where he also had an appointment at Hermes to have another uh, miniature bag uh, get acquired by her. Now, why did why did he fly it over there to give it so she could have two Birkins on on one trip, Barrett? OK, All imagine right. not giving your wife two Birkins for Christmas. Uh, so, OK, so he just he brought it with him or he like mailed it over there. I think he brought it with him <laughs> over there to gift her two at once. <laughs> um, and the, the real kicker here is that people really enjoy the fact that he calls her Pookie. No one in 2023 is still calling. Is, someone go, is, doing, is doing Pookie. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's like, here's your Chick-fil-A Pookie. <laughs> But this yeah. couple has really just taken over my my TikTok al algorithm, and I think it's for both all the right reasons and all the wrong reasons. Like, why are we okay, not? This doing is this is the 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 the, the Nolita dirtbag meme was screen grabbed from this video. Well, and wait, like, and the the feeling that I got, like the the context that I was taking away from it, was that she's kind of dressed in it, what in what what I would call something like very like 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 on trend fashion forward, right? Like a lingerie -ish top. The the kind of the cropped cardigan, baggy jean, and he is in like super trad menswear. Oh yeah, right. Oh, yeah. So that that that's the 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 kind of the 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 glaring like he's not decked out in the in the our legacy Stussy drop. So so naturally like 
we're, 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 we're not fawning over his, over his fit. Well, that's why I love fashion because something like something like that moves the needle for us so little, but this, this moves the needle for so many, like for yeah. such a different group of people that aren't in the same fashion, like interests that we have. Like I loved, I love the idea that like that, that outfit is probably the outfit that makes him feel invincible on a night out. Sure. Whereas for me, it could not be anything <laughs> close to that. <laughs> But this, yeah, I, this couple is just great. I can I I I I'm very interested to see where they go and I they live such an extravagant lifestyle that I I almost can't look away. They're just killing it. Man, where 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 was the uh one calling them out? Oh, if you start trying to find a a certain meme from Nolita Dirtbag, you can yeah, be searching forever. That's that is true. Yeah. Okay. He does have a recipe for the best espresso martini at which point uh, I would like to uh well, we got to try I'd like that. to check that. Um, people also know like him because he looks like Matt Damon a little bit. <laughs> he kind of just looks like a, a, a bizarro version of Matt Damon. Okay. I feel like he was on this one. He might have had to delete it. He, 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 did he get, did he get uh, in trouble for uh, slandering Pookie? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it was on there somewhere. I'll, I'll pull it up at, a, at, at some point. But uh, okay. And so Campbell, he is Campbell. I don't know who's Campbell. I'll be or honest. she Campbell. I think she might be Campbell. All right. I get the feeling that she oh, yeah, started getting. Yeah, I think she's Campbell. Yeah, I think she started getting Instagram or TikTok famous, and then like it just became a thing of like so many TikTok creators out there have significant others that play huge roles in their their content, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I feel like they don't want to always bring them totally into the fold to make right. them that, but they know that they'll do numbers if they have one post a week that's like, oh, my husband's doing this. Yeah. And this guy's really doing a good job of making himself look like a. Uh, uh, a great husband based on the stuff that he's doing. I, I'm not I, I'm not going to lie to you, Will. I kind of like the name Campbell. I do too. Yeah. I do too. Yeah. It's a good name. Uh, I also associate that name a lot with Pierce Bush. Okay. You know what I'm saying, Campbell? Do you remember that video from back in the day? I don't. Uh, Pierce Bush, <laughs> a noted descendant of the Bush family, was on an early morning interview on the Today Show. And they, you have to go watch it. I, it might not even be on the internet anymore, but I think I, he, I okay. think he might have been drunk during the video. This is ringing a bell now. Yeah, and he was like talking about going to back home to hit the mattress after a late night. And he goes, "You know what I'm saying, Campbell?" And so now, whenever I see the name Campbell, I just immediately think of Pierce Bush. <laughs> uh, Campbell's on her mob mob wife grind. She's already. definitely on her mob wife grind. I got to can we can we? Talk, I know we we. I feel like we were almost too early. We were mob wife. We were last week, two um, weeks ago. Two okay. It is exploded obviously and i'm 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 telling you right now that the they they keep talking like the like the tagline like if you want your video to go viral you also have to mention clean girl oh it's like i'm done with clean girl now i'm in my mob life or at least that's a, that's something that i've noticed is a lot of people are making sure that they it's it's not just the rise of mob wife but it's like the 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 downtrend I'm not ready for clean girl on, to go away. On clean girl, why do clean girls and, have to die in order for mob wives well, to live? So that's what I, that's what I, that's where I was going with this. The fact that like there's so much talk about the clean girl in the video still actually makes me think that clean girl is not dead. And I'm 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 calling it here. I think mob wife is a flash in the pan. Mob wife will be gone the second March hits and we get like yeah, warm temperatures exactly, and everyone's exactly. gonna go back to their summer dressing if and forget about if this. If you can't wear a fur coat. Mob wife is not, it's not an aesthetic, basically. The only thing that, like that's, that's the quintessential piece. And I know that you, you, I, I'm saying that like in the social media, in the context of social media, that is the quintessential piece. I understand that you can do a Sharon Stone in, in Casino and a Michelle Pfeiffer in uh, Scarface. Like you can, you can replicate those looks over the course of spring, summer, but like the, the indicator that you're doing mob wife right now is the, is the fur. Do you think? I don't know. Mob Wife has been so popular for the last two weeks that yeah. like, okay, are there companies out there that are currently planning their future, uh, their future collections and they would like look at Mob Wife and then like a year and a half from now, we're going to see a bunch of like fur coats getting sold again? Yeah, no, I, I would say even as soon as this, this fall, because for, for a winter trend, this has actually happened pr fairly late. Yeah. Right. Oh like yeah. We're, like we're damn near in February. Yeah. Too in, late. In, in, if in if the, this would have hit in late November, right? Like Christmas this year would have been the most mob Christmas of all Exa time. Exactly. Exactly. So I. So th to to that end, I do expect that you'll see a ton of faux fur rolling out early next fall. Yeah. Like I do think that that it's something that will that will jump back to. But like, but I don't think Clean Girl's gone for good. And I do think that 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 Mob Wife is almost almost having too much of an impact on social media right now to like hold strong. 
these clean girls doing dry January are just like punching air right now. They're like, what yeah. are we supposed to do? Yeah. It's, it's just, it's not a good time. No. I think they'll prevail as well. Should we do some wish list items? Okay. I'm going to let you go first. Okay. Uh, I spent some time on my wish list item today. I didn't want to put something on my list that I didn't want or I didn't need. I didn't want to just willy nilly just think of something and toss it on there that I'd never buy. Today, I was going to step out a little bit and I noticed the other day that my cologne is getting a little low. And so I think it's time to re up. I don't need too much. I don't need too much to get me through about a year. It's not something I wear that often. It's only for nights out or if I'm really feeling bougie. And uh, I'm going to go with my, my staple favorite, Aqua de Parma. And I'm going with their Colonia Club. Uh, I will buy a small bottle of this, and if I can make it long enough to uh, the summertime, I will simply wait until I'm in the duty-free place during my brother-in-law's wedding in Italy and just get this at a deep, deep discount. Uh, but unless unless I run out, uh, I'm going to wait till then. But I'm putting this on the list. It's uh, bergamot and lemon bring a sparkling opening to the cologne, while pink and black pepper notes invigorate the bright bond between aromatic shiso and rosemary in the heart of the fragrance. Now, now have you smelled this? I haven't smelled this yet. Uh, and so I would like to, what I'd really like to do is to buy something else. And then, you know how you always get the free little samplers and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I would like to figure out a way to get a sample of this. Sure. That, that being be, said, that would be, be nice. Aqua de Parma has so much brand equity built up for me at this point that I really have full faith, especially I like their citrusy sense a lot. Okay. And I used to sell Aqua de Parma at my old job. So I know a lot about them as a company. Um, I was a little devastated the other day to see a throwing fits meme saying that if uh, some guy that looks like this is moving to your neighborhood, the price of Aqua de Parma is going up. And I was like, no, I don't need Aqua de Parma in the zeitgeist. I like this. This existed outside of the world that I read about online, but it's okay. It's okay. I'm following suit with like kind of a legit need. Uh, you, y'all, know, I'm still on that, that wedding grind, um, having to buy a lot of wedding stuff. Um, and I'm basically re-rigging my entire my entire tux kit. Oh wow! Yeah, you know, I is this after the New York Times article I sent you yesterday? No, no, no. This is this is I'm I'm sticking to the track that I was already on. Unfortunately, oh, okay. that article dropped a little bit too late for me to just go like full like angel sent from heaven gauze mm -hmm. cardigan. I want you to have a train. Yeah, with like yeah, with a with a train to to match my brides. Um, but no. So uh, the next piece of the uh, of the kit here that I need to upgrade is the cufflinks. Is the tuxedo cufflinks? I think. Right, I'm speaking. I'm one of these people. I'm about to say. I think most guys could probably use an upgrade. Yeah, in that you, department. like I can't just like the 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 black and silver cufflinks that I have right now in a little black velvet box. Mm -hmm. Like almost definitely came from Al's formal wear on a tux that I rented 17 years ago. Yeah, mine are either some <laughs> that I've borrowed from someone or some that I bought online. The cheapest ones that I could find online in a pinch. Like, so I know they're not nice. I am. Um, I'd be curious to hear from like our our real menswear heads out there. You know, our real yeah. like they're subscribing to all the rules. Um, you know about what type of cufflinks might like truly truly set off a tux. But right now, I'm keeping it classic because based on my my limited research, the silver with the onyx is really the go to. Um, I just would like a really nice kind of like lifelong pair. And so I've I've uh, I think I've I've narrowed it down to uh, to this this pair from Mont Blanc, the uh, the Meisterstück. Stainless steel and black onyx cufflinks. Uh, I just like Saks, Neiman's, all these places. They're running like the deals where like it's like fifty off of two fifty. Yeah, and for some reason they're not including these. And like I need them to. Yeah, what? Because because I need to feel like don't I'm, nickel and dime the guys that I'm, need because I'm saving. A, I need to, I need to I, that feeling of like oh well I got them for you know I got them for two two hundred right. <sighs> I have I, should, I have a like, pair that I need looks to save a little bit. I have a the pair that I have is like like I said the cheapest possible pair you could get and they're in this style that's yeah. kind of like a black dot. Right. I I'm very I'm very much gravitating towards doing something like this. I want some silver. Um and I I'm, I'm gravitating towards doing like one of the knotted ball ones. Yeah. I kind of yeah. think those are cool. Yep. I'm also I I wore a tux for the first time in a long time last weekend and I wore a flat front shirt. Right. So it only required me yeah, having no like studs. yeah, I didn't have any studs which yep. was honestly for not being the center of attention, like I wasn't the groom or anything, it right. was so nice to just have that. It was so much easier to get ready and I, so much nicer. And so, like going yeah. through, I wasn't going through my toiletry kit, being like, "Oh, which stud did I forget?" <laughs> and it was just, it was just comforting. Yeah, I, I've been going the studless route with the covered placket for for quite a while right now, and it's just one less thing you have to think about. Um, and then typically, like 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 you had a stud set pulled up, right? It's it's what it's four studs. It's four studs, yeah. Yeah, so I and I, I know that there's differing opinions on this. I think even like I think we've even talked about how Sid Mashburn is okay with like only wearing the four studs and then still not going cummerbund or vest. I think it's weird when you have a shirt 
tucked into your pants. There's four studs and then blank. I agree. And then it's I've just done back, this back to the plastic buttons. I, that, that it just feels incomplete to me. So I've I, done this. And now I look back at the photos of when I did it. And I think to myself, like you just, everyone else looked better. Yeah. Like so everyone the, else looked more formal, more put together. It looked like I forgot my cummerbund. Yeah. So, um, I'd love to hear other options on the cufflinks. I have looked at some stuff that's just silver. Um, you know, I, I, if, I, if, if anybody has a bead on like some super badass like golden retriever cufflinks, I would go. I would go cutesy if it made enough sense. What uh, if we but, cut uh, some of the yeah. hair from your dogs <laughs> and we got cufflinks made with that like in some type of like resin, like like Jurassic Park style, with right, the, the right. mosquito? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were gonna say we we would we would weave the dog hair into actual little knot cufflinks. No, well that would be for your tie. Okay, we'll okay. do dog hair for dog your hair tie. Bow tie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are your dogs gonna make any appearance at the wedding? Um, TBD. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll be honest. I was a little bummed when I didn't see Rosie running down the aisle as a surprise <laughs> at my wedding. I was like, "Damn it!" I was kind of thought Sally would do that for us. Well, might that was a little, might have been hard to get her all the way out to uh, out California way. I don't know. I was in the TSA pre-check line the other day, and there's a woman with a cat on her shoulder. Yeah, you and the, you you did get married during the heyday of like you just like slapped a red vest on your dog, and you were like, "It's a therapy dog," and they were just like, "Onto the plane, sir." Yeah, we. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we straight up did that with Rosie numerous times in Michigan because we were like, "I we I want to take her up there." It's it's a lot easier to do that than it is to get a, a dog sitter that's going to yeah, cost they, me a bunch of money. Yeah, they've kind of cracked down on that. I think. Yeah, I think there's still pretty easy routes around it based on the you know the kittens that I've seen in the <laughs> airport as of late. But at the same time, uh, I don't want to be the person with a dog that doesn't need to be on the plane anymore. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty easy. That's all she wrote for today. That was a loaded episode. Very on brand episode. Very happy with what wow. just happened there. Wow, ALD, <laughs> nothing. That's a that's a big step for us, Randy. Not yeah. a single reference. Yeah. If, if yeah. I can make it through an episode without talking about ALD or Grateful Dead, it's been a good day. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next week. Crowning achievement.